Well, hi, this is Sue the Soggy Stamper, and it's Friday evening, um, a sunny Friday evening. Um, this is my fabulous Friday Facebook Live, and I'm excited to show you this new stamp set, actually bundle, that is coming up in the new annual catalog. It is called Layers of Beauty, and I've made this card using that as, as one of the things. Now, this bundle includes this gorgeous stamp set with this great big flower and it has a couple of smaller pieces as well the greetings are happy anniversary grateful for you and god bless oh and you make my heart smile the dies that go with this is one big one to cut out the large stamp so you can whoop let me get it oriented oriented right okay let's go well it's not going to fit exactly this because this is not quite a full um, full size but anyway it's this great big huge stamp and the die would fit like that and we'll cut out the whole thing. But what's really special about this set is there is another die that will cut out just the single rows. Can you see how it cuts out the single rows? And that's what we're going to use tonight. And this technique is a watercolor technique. Oh, the rest of the bundle includes these masks decorative masks and these are pretty special there's one two three ah oh, come on four five different masks that go together to provide all the details of the thing and it's nice is they have this notch thing here so you can tell which how to fit them together we will use those on another time now set those aside okay so let's start and i am using oh i need to use watercolor paper where's my watercolor paper The watercolor paper comes in a package of mm -hmm. and center. Where are you? It's six by eight. It's a it's a narrow a smaller size, and I cannot find my package. Oh, no. Can't find it right now. But anyway, it's watercolor paper. And this is designed to hold up. It's a heavier weight. And it is designed to hold up against water. Whereas when you use just regular cardstock, you end up with it, it warping like that. Or if you try and uh, it gets rough, the surface can get rubbed up um, and so the watercolor paper works a whole lot better and I'm going to emboss it with gold embossing powder so I need my embossing buddy I wasn't sure quite how well it would emboss on the watercolor paper but it does a beautiful job and this stamp let me check make sure it will fit It'll fit on the space over there. So this takes off the static electricity. And then I have a scrap piece of copy paper and a Versamark pad. And since I don't need the whole thing, I am going to ink up 
just a portion of it like that and then stamp and I have gold embossing powder love gold embossing powder I love the gold I'm not sure if we still have it or not but we had copper at one point there so not all of it got um, stamped but we don't need any of this part this is the only part that we're going to use on there. Now if I had the embossing um, accessory kit, I could have just dumped it back into the tray. I would not have had to worry about it getting spilled like that. Okay, then we use the heat tool to melt it. On the hot setting. I'll run it for a little bit down here so it gets hot without you having to listen to it. Now some people go over it over and over and over like this when they're doing heat and busting, but I like to move it slowly and smoothly so that it melts the whole and it melts a nice smooth edge to it. And even though I'm not going to be using the whole image, I am going to invite, melt all the embossing powder so I don't have it crumbling off the thing. Okay, so the goal is the goal is to have a nice smooth edge without heating it so much that it soaks into the paper. Okay, next step, and this is the watercolor portion. I'm going to open up. This is one of the new colors, Petunia Pop. And I discovered that by squeezing it at the back, it pops. It really pops. Now you could take from the reinker and add some drops there. And normally, with the older sets, you can squeeze it like this, but these don't give very much. So that I have not been able to get ink on this part. So I'll just take it off there. Okay, so I'm going to mist it well. So that there's standing water on the image. like that will work. And then I'm going to take a water painter. You can use a watercolor brush if you prefer. And I'm going to pick up some ink. And then what's the magic is you just touch it. See how it runs? And the more you add, the darker it will be. I have discovered that watercolors dry lighter than what you would expect. And by just touching it like that, it spreads it out so you have a really pretty um, gradation. bit darker in the center there. Add a little bit more there maybe. A little bit more along here.
Okay. Then the painter has to get cleaned off. The water painter comes in series of three sizes. This is the medium sized brush and there's a smaller fine pointed brush. And then there's a larger one like this for big washes. You get a set of three of them and it's around $13. And you just run water through it until the water comes out clear. I think that'll take a while. So I'll get a different one. Okay, where's the smaller one? Here's the smaller one. And I'm going to blot this so it Then I'm going to use Mossy Meadow. See, that's, that's how it usually comes out. Pick up some on the brush. And that is it. Give it a chance to run a little bit. See there and now that that's come out clean. The other one is really a strong color. Of course I took it right off the ink pad. Another way you can do it is to use the re-inker, put just a drop or so on an acrylic book block or on your craft sheet, and um, then pick it up from that rather than directly from the pad. Okay, so now let's dry it. The heat tool has two settings. We're gonna put it just to the second setting. Let me blunt this a little more so it'll dry faster. And I really love the way it just kind of flows out like it's been watercolored. It's pretty dry. It's drier than my pad. Let's see if I can dry my pad here a little bit. My working surface. There, yeah, that's better. Okay, so next thing to do is to cut it out. place rather. Oh, that one's starting to crack too. The price of things are, is going up. The price of everything's going up, but the price of the stamping supplies, some of the basic ones in particular, are going up. And um, so I suggest, like the cutting plates, if you are, yours are getting cut up and scratched like mine, I'd suggest you getting um, getting it now before the 1st of May because 1st of May the price goes up not a whole lot but get it now and you can save yourself some money
The same thing is true with cardstock and some of the white paper, the white envelopes. There's a lot of the paper goods, the price is going up. Cut that out. And there we have it. Okay, so now we're gonna put the card together. I have a card base that I was 11 by four and a quarter and I scored it at five and a half. I used extra thick to give it a little more stability. And then this I made using the soon to be retired um, dies. These are the Thoughtful Expression dies. I absolutely love this scallop, scalloped edge. And um, for some reason, they're... And I put it on, use some adhesive sheet behind it beforehand, because it is so easy put down then no chance of having too much adhesive that slips out from behind. Come on. There we go. And we're going to Put this on with Stumpin' Dimensionals. Well, come on, stick. And again, I have the adhesive sheet on the back. Because it makes it so easy to put these on. here. Kind of like the way it pokes out, goes out over the frame. does not want to stay down. Maybe that'll help to hold it down. I think because of all the stitching is why the adhesive doesn't make as good a contact. Okay, so the greeting I am going to use, now on my sample card, I used Thinking of You, but my son and his wife are having an anniversary on the 17th, and I'm going to use the Happy Anniversary stamp. off. Using the mossy metal. Whoop. Might help to ink the right side of the block. Happy anniversary. 
anniversary. Yay! I'll have it all done. I can send it to them tomorrow. Oh, for Pete's sake. Why do I put my fingers in the ink pad? Well, you're not a stamper if you don't get inky fingers, right? And then the last thing to do, I have this gold on gold satin edged ribbon, and it is going to retire this time around. Well, maybe it is already retired. I thought I was picking up gold and red, white, which is in the catalog. But anyway, any rate, I made this cute little bowl, which I'm going to put right over here with a glue dot. These little glue dots come from the paper pumpkin kit. They always give you more than you need. And they are the perfect size for putting on bows because you don't have to fold them over much at all. Just plop that bow on there. And there you have it. Happy anniversary. And I'll write a great thing inside. It's going to be the 31st anniversary. Can't believe I'm old enough to have a son who's been married for 31 years. That's just hard to believe. Anyhow, thank you for watching. This is Sue, the Soggy Stamper. Rain or shine, it is stamping time. Um, you've, if you have any questions, you can ask, email me, sue at soggystamper.com. My blog is www.soggystamper.com, and I'm going to post on my blog um, probably Monday um, some of the um, things that are retire uh, the price increases so that you can be prepared uh, and order before they go up um, if you need any products you can either go to my store online store creations by sue.stampinup.net or you can go to my blog the soggy stamper and there's a button in the upper right corner says shop now and then it will take you right to my store if you live here in the United States and don't have a cut um, a demonstrator yet I would love to send you one of the new annual catalogs um, so just give me an e send me an email at soggystamper.com sue at soggystamper.com with your name and your snail mail address and your phone number you might wonder why the phone number but I like to be able to contact you to see if there's anything I can help you with or or even just to make sure you get the catalog so thank you for watching tonight. You have a wonderful weekend, and we'll see you again next Friday evening at either 4 o'clock or 7 o'clock. You might have to check online with my Facebook page because um, it depends partly on what is happening in my life.